Peter Hitchens vs Nick Clegg on the issue of drugs and cannabis legalization. I pretty much agree with everything that Peter says on this matter, but where do you stand? Please give your thoughts in the comments. What's the best way of dealing with Britain's drug problem? Stricter laws, better enforcement, or harsher sentences, perhaps? Well, our guest politics, of the day, Nick seemed... Clegg, thinks not. In government, he was a big proponent of decriminalising drug use. Illegal. Ooh, voices no coming everywhere, who wants... but failed to persuade his Conservative cabinet colleagues that a change in the law was needed. Giles has been looking at the arguments. Giles. Oh, and now, of course, in gonna... British politics, it seemed we'd all agreed that cannabis and other drugs would and should be illegal. No politician who wanted office was going to seriously suggest changing that. Whenever they have, they've lost and they've been told they must be off their heads. But has that changed? For a variety of reasons, countries like Uruguay, Portugal and nearly half the states of America have relaxed their laws on cannabis at least because they say total prohibition doesn't work. The intense attack on prohibition of cannabis over the last 30 years has led to a shift in the nature of cannabis. We no longer import balanced cannabis, which has a mixture of THC and cannabidiol from Morocco or Lebanon. We've tended to resort to homegrown cannabis, where people have looked to get the maximum bang for their bucks. It's a chicken and egg argument about a plant. Does prohibition make underground drugs far stronger, open a gateway to experimentation with harder drugs? And even if that's the case, now it's out there, would decriminalisation or legalisation, they're not the same thing, mean skunk, spice and other synthetic replacements would simply disappear in a regulated market? It's rather like suggesting that if, the, if, if we took a, a drug that was free, freely available, alcohol, that people wouldn't want to drink vodka or whiskey. They would prefer just to have lager or wheat beer. So the drug's genie is out of the bottle. But do people who are criminalised want to seek help? Does someone with a criminal record for smoking something arguably less dangerous in moderation than alcohol find themselves marginalised? These are some of the arguments Nick Clegg has explored in other parts of the world, and others agree. Free markets in all drugs would be a disaster. But where countries have decriminalised the possession of drugs, we've, off, we've seen often very good health gains. And the classic example, of course, is Portugal, where it realised it was economically unfeasible to continue the traditional way of prosecuting drug users. Let's look at Colorado, for instance, where they have decriminalised and legalised cannabis use. Um, amongst 12 to 18 year olds being randomly tested in high schools, we used to see about 5.6% of those young people uh, um, testing positive for cannabis use. Now it's up to 57% since legalisation. But trading drugs initiatives aside, there is one problem that's always pushed drugs use, especially cannabis, into the arena of taboo. We have a lot more people who wouldn't have developed psychosis, schizophrenia-like condition, if they hadn't been using skunk. And the trouble is that a good proportion of them are so dependent that they don't stop. I rang a, a drug addict friend of mine who's in recovery and I said, Jamie, what do you think about legalisation? He said, well, if you legalise drugs, send the police around, put me in handcuffs because in six months I'd be dead. They fail to understand actually what addiction means to people. You, if you're an addict, you can never get enough. For all the arguments for changing things, it seems the obstacles, if you'll forgive me, are as high as ever. Well, we're joined now by the Mail on Sunday columnist Peter Hitchens. Welcome to The Daily Politics. But first of all, Nick Clegg, you've just returned, I understand, from attending a UN summit in New York on drug reform. It was widely panned as being something of a damp squib. Were you very disappointed? Uh, I wasn't surprised. You, you've, got, you've got now such diverse opinion across the world. So you've got sort of nations like Russia, China, Asian countries who want to sort of chop people's hands off if they touch drugs. And then you've got this huge experiment, particularly in North and Latin America, towards decriminalisation mm. and or regulation, which are, by the way, separate. The, sure. the, the, the film slightly conflated the two. And so the world is now really quite polarised in its debate. 
In so I say no, no wonder, therefore, that if you bring all those countries together, but they can't agree. But you accept that nothing really substantial was achieved? Not, not much was achieved there. Well, what's happening, which is the, which is the interesting thing, is, is, is what's happening in, in countries uh, uh, across the world who are experimenting, are innovating, are trying to do something different to try and reduce the harm of drugs. And right. I think that's where, in a sense, the, that's where the debate is now. Not in the UN, it's more at national or even local level. Do you accept that because there are these polarised positions, as Nick Clegg has just outlined, it's very difficult then to, to look at what some people would argue is the sensible view of decriminalising um, some drugs in order to reduce the number of people who are actually becoming addicted to hard, harder drugs. So almost everything you said uh, was factually wrong there. Uh, the problem with this debate is that it's conducted at a level of ignorance which is positively astonishing. The biggest decriminalisation experiment probably in the Western world has been conducted in this country since 1971 under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Cannabis has been effectively a decriminalised drug in this country for many years. The head of the flying squad, John O'Connor, said so in 1994. Lord Hailsham, that well-known hippie, instructed magistrates to stop sending people to prison for cannabis possession in 1973. The number of people actually arrested and prosecuted for cannabis possession has been dropping like a stone in the past few years. Before then, the police invented something without asking Parliament called the Cannabis Warning, which allowed them to let people off. Cannabis possession in this country has been decriminalised. What is now going on is a huge, very well-funded campaign, what I call billionaire big dope, uh, to, to achieve the next stage, which is legalisation, which will now allow the marketing, the selling on the internet, the advertising, the appearance in shops of this product, and huge profits to be made. Right. While well, at the same time, this is absolutely vital, the mental health risks right. well, that's what I want to come are to. enormous. And, 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 and Nick Clegg's party has been very rightly concerned about mental health and the yes. way it's neglected. A huge contribution to mental illness in this country is made by the very drugs which he seeks to legalise. All right, well, let's, you know, taking the point that, in your view, Peter Hitchens, there has been a sort of de facto decriminalisation. It's not my view, the facts but, are all well, available. But the, 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 it's the view you've expressed. Book but hang on, to Mr. Clegg. let me get that on to... contains them. If you read it, you'll have to stop saying everything you say because everything you say is wrong. Well, don't say you don't get any much, gifts. Don't challenge. say you don't get any gifts on this programme. Um, but in terms of the mental health, because that, mm. that is the big worry for people, that actually um, you can argue for decriminalisation mm. and we will cite um, statistics from countries like Portugal mm. that have actually shown uh, you can then uh, remove the barriers to help addicts. Mm. But because of the nature of the skunk or the cannabis that mm. is now being dealt, you are getting increasing mm. numbers of young people suffering from schizophrenia. Why is your party still pushing that sure. policy? So, let's, uh, I think, um, Peter, bless him, just on completely the wrong footing. I don't, don't think drug me, no, no. <laughs> okay. uh, that drugs are bad for you, right? Sure. They cause harm. I'm a dad. I don't want my kids hooked on drugs. You have to reduce the harm of drugs. What you can't do, which is Peter and others, is somehow sort of wish it away and somehow think you can sort of prohibit drugs out of existence. They've been in existence for thousands of years. They will always be with us. So as a society, if you want to have a grown-up debate about this, you have to ask yourself why the war on drugs and the prohibitionist approach has not worked and ask yourself, for instance, if you want to look at the evidence and the data, why is it that we've just had the highest rate of drug-related fatalities in this country, three and a half thousand people, drug related deaths in 2014. Portugal, after decriminalization, and by the way, they didn't do it for some hippie. Uh, instinct. They did it because originally they were worried about the link between drug addiction and HIV a contamination, a, a spread of HIV. They've had 22 drug-related fatalities. At some point, people like Peter have to accept that the war on drugs is not working. And if something's not working, I generally think you try and something, try something and, else. And Peter, if you look at the Peter, cover of the Peter. book, you'll find it says the war we never fought. Right, there but Peter, can I just no can war I just on drugs? You, if, I, no, no, Nick Clegg was asking for an adult argument. Yeah, but I want to put the figures to you. You, hang on. Straw man. Right, but and let me put the, the figures to you in Portugal me, because people are interested in evidence based yes, too. Indeed. And That's in Portugal, the number of deaths from street drug overdoses five years after decriminalisation fell from 400 to 290. The number of new HIV infections from dirty needles fell from 2000 to 400. In Washington state, the first year of legalisation, raised a lot of money too that went into um, helping uh, drug addicts, but marijuana-related convictions fell by 81% after the first year of well, decriminalisation. A mix so, of figures there. Well, I, I but everything comes totally down from uh, decriminalisation and legalisation. Let concentrate on the subject that I know about and that we can influence, which is what's going on in this country, which is the, the covert 
a de jure, the current de facto decriminalization of cannabis in this country. You, you need to look at the figures on arrests. In the past five years alone, the number of arrests for cannabis has, uh, uh, possession has halved. The, the head of Bristol Police said earlier on this week that they weren't bothering to arrest people for cannabis. Will you please stop pretending there's some kind of savage prohibitionary war? This country is involved in a huge decriminalization experiment. All the things which you blame on prohibition are actually the result of this decriminalization experiment about which you appear not to know. They're the figures are all available. No. Some of them right. are well, let by Nick you Nick in Nick parliamentary questions asked by you, so you ought to know. But right. the, 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 if only people would actually discuss this, and I'm constantly told, let's discuss this factually. I wrote an entire book on this. It contains the details of how this happened. Mm. Why don't you pay any attention? And why do you... You say you're worried about your Hang children. Hang on, Pete, you, Pete, no, Pete, Pete, Pete we've run out of time. Worried about your children. You're worried about your children. You should not be pleased with the way in which they're exposed now wholly to a completely unrestrained cannabis trade. So I think dreadful Peter. Peter, very hang dangerous on. Let, let Nick Clegg answer. <laughs> so Peter, of course, is correct uh, when he's saying that there is sort of de facto decriminalisation well, going on. It, well, but it's, it's not well, a very... Well, I'm going to write that down and quote it. Well, hang on. It's, hang on. it's not a very remarkable discovery. It's, everyone knows it. So in Durham... Well, we never say it, though. Well, anyway, <laughs> I can get a word in... You've never said it before. You, uh, you Peter, said, you Peter said a couple Hitchin, of years ago. Hang on a second. Thousands of people were sent to jail every year. You need to let Nick Clegg speak. This is not a monologue. Peter Hitchens, let Nick Clegg speak. Very, very early gets You do yourself no favours with this. I'm doing myself a big favour. Nick Clegg. All I'm pointing out to Peter is his views are not actually particularly remarkable. Of course, there is de facto decriminalisation going on. The Chief Constable in Durham has made it quite clear that his police officers are not going to arrest people for the personal possession of cannabis. So, actually, on that... That narrow point, I agree with Peter. Let's have a bit of honesty that decriminalisation is happening de facto. That's why in government I always said, let's just do, do what's happening. Right. But the, the, what, what Peter doesn't uh, address is that you have this sort of legal twilight world where it's sort of happening in practice but it's not recognised in law. At the same time, it's the criminal gangs who nonetheless continue to profit from it all. And my question is, what, to what, to what, uh, at what point uh, is, is uh, criminality, mass criminality, the answer? To, the, to, to drugs and the harm they do to individuals. I've never understood why anyone thinks that letting criminals run this industry is the best way to protect youngsters, because they have no interest in protecting our youngsters whatsoever. So, let's right, so, so let cynical businessmen say... write as well as they ran the no, big, to, no, big tobacco. Peter Hitchens, right, on that note, <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like the content, why not subscribe to my channel or give it a thumbs up.